So yeah, we're going to hand over now um, to Roland to talk about MAPA privacy. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction and um, thank you for the um, thank you for coming here to the talk. And um, I'm talking about MAPA's privacy. This is um, not about the GDPR because this would easily fill an entire talk, or even less about current law in general. There are still some GDPR work by the OSMF underway. You will see uh, things changing uh, in the upcoming years. I will be honest, in the upcoming years. It has been two years ago that uh, um, GDPR got effective and uh, there has not happened that much in, in this time. Then um, this work will mostly increase privacy and uh, mappers continue to uh, And mappers continue to get information about other mappers, but usually what will happen from the OSMF side is that uh, functions now known that somehow are about mappers data will get behind a bar that you need to log in. I document here the actual information flow. And one important thing to keep in mind, OpenStreetMap relies on accountability as in science. Accountability has to be pride of the own uh, of the own things one has done and not about accountability as in crime or liability where you try to, to avoid to being, the, being accountable for something. This means in particular um, there's not that much uh, checking necessary than the other way around because there are no drastic consequences if you are just hold accountable uh, for a thing you haven't done. The hope is, um, of this talk is that you learn to get where your data inevitably gets at, at and uh, get the right idea what happens to it. I will start with one extreme case to get everybody awake. Just please read this text. I hope it's, is it big enough? Okay, I'll just read out. In response to receiving a short-term account ban from one of the members of the our data working group, you have contacted their employer and complained about supposedly illegal activity on their part. You have crossed the line by attempting person to personally intimidate those who volunteer the time uh, for OSMF. This is totally unacceptable. And what has happened here is in one extreme case, I never have heard uh, about this, but 99% um, of all MMAPAs are of course, harmless, of, of course harmless. But in this case, it turned out to be somebody who has already been convicted about stalking and uh, who has attacked one, uh, one of the um, data working group members trying to do his proper work and to sort out uh, vandalism. The stalker has done. And so this is see why there is some matter in having the, uh, in getting privacy right. We all trust all the day and we can trust that most of our fellow mappers are somewhere in the range of normal behaved people. But just in case of a thing like this or in case your government gets totally, um, gets totally bad, it's also not completely impossible. It's always better if, you, um, if they just can't do a thing because they don't have the data to do it. And for, that, for this reason, I would in general strongly, co um, strongly suggest to use pseudonyms, which means it should be impossible to get from your OSM data to your private phone number or your private uh, postal address. Email address uh, depend a little bit. Um, if you ultimately from your email address can back, uh, can back, back to a postal address and so on, it's probably a bad idea anyway. It's just, that's a little bit of clash between this pride I've mentioned before and on the other hand, this one. It's just to mention, it's not totally pointless. It's not uh, just fulfilling a fancy um, legislation. There's really some background to this. So the general OSMF policy on this is I'm not, I'm not um, part of the board and even no board member could just speak for this. This is not a 
officially announced policy, but the general policy to, to give you an idea is you need to be a mapper to see the data of other mappers. This was the basic idea about uh, how all the functions after the work should uh, look like. The important thing is here, this deters uh, blatant abuses of the data. Just if a company is going to just um, covertly copy all of the data, they know that they are doing something um, unlawful. But on the other end, you have just seen that the stalker in question would easily would have still have got all the mapper's data. So uh, this is not going to to be the magic silver bullet that makes every data safe, so that we have a walled garden where everything is uh, is safe inside. We do never uh, we do not want to make this promise. We cannot make this promise, to be honest. So yes. Uh, this is a policy that um, solves most of the problems, but still, you should at any point uh, understand how your data, the data you to, um, that you add, is going to, to last. A very good side to get this about the general mapping activity is uh, how did you contribute from Pascal Nice? Who in the room can, uh, knows the tool? Okay, I uh, encourage everyone else to. <laughs> Google for um, HDAYC and uh, OSM, or Pascal Nice, if this is easier to, to remember for you. The idea of this tool is you have to log in as an OSM user to get uh, to can it use. This is in accordance with, uh, with the policy mentioned before. And then you can ask the information about any other mapper. What I have done is I have two accounts. Um, one for my activity, private activity and the other for, the, for my working activity. And I have just uh, used all the data from my working activity uh, or just watched all the data of my working activity from my uh, private account. So from the system's point of view, it's, uh, it's one mapper about a fellow mapper, but in fact, it's me about me. So I'm... I can present this data without, um, without hurting anybody's uh, privacy. So this is a very good tool to see what's possible, um, what's, uh, what the baseline possibilities are about what happens to your mapping data. And I'll come back to this in a moment. You'll just sift through this point and then get to additional uh, in channels. One thing you could do is the classification of edits. This is, for example, not directly in a, um, how did you contribute inside, but you can do it with Overpass API, and there are some other tools too. And what, I have, what have I done here? Well, I have queried which uh, keys, how often a key, um, no, how many objects uh, carry a key with this um, value in the objects that the user, uh, DROLBR underscore MDB, that's my workplace user, username uh, has touched. So I see relatively clearly there are 949 objects um, with carrying a key railway that I have touched. There are <coughs> many other objects, or all the objects that are on the top of the list are um, are about railways, so obviously the, um, my workplace account is mostly busy with doing railway mapping. And uh, you could also see that I'm not doing much about, um, about wheelchairs because it's the first place where one tech related to this appears. And you could get, get this uh, more fine, but, obvious, uh, but if you think a couple of minutes about it, it would be even more interesting to get it more coarse. To get uh, to define for yourself categories of what you are interested in, and uh, then uh, then put together, group together several tags to um, to see really just bars how or intensities how uh, how much is, uh, a certain mapper is interested in one subject. And this is possible. It's also done by, by how did you contribute in a slightly different setting. 
And they look into change sets and they make a back resolvement um, of, the, um, of the objects that are touched in the change set and look in which presets, in which chosen presets, uh, the tags of these objects are described. This looks like this, and it's only done for uh, single uh, change sets. But uh, this is just an example to see what, you, uh, what about your user data could be made. You could really, you could even combine this with the uh, thing seen before, and you could see how your interests have, the, um, have um, evolved and whether you had involved railways um, presets just in the first three years and then they diminished, or whether they have been super present all over the time, or whether our wheelchair um, presets just have popped up in the last year, and so I couldn't credibly uh, claim that I have been involved with wheelchair taking much longer, and so on. But happily enough, um, there is no uh, there's no tool so far ready to do this. And at the moment, due to the structure of the database, it would require to, to uh, process the full history planet dump. And that's quite a big of things. So I don't think it's happened, uh, happened yet. But it's, you should keep in mind, it would be possible at any moment for any other mapper to get a detailed idea what you are interested in on subjects what, uh, concerning your mapping. And also, where are about your areas of interest? And indeed, um, a similar thing that uh, did create some uprear. There are two sections in how did you contribute uh, that uh, created where people were surprised from. One is that you could uh, figure out this is a style that you also find in GitHub. So if you're doing co um, commits to bit, um, if you work with GitHub, you, a similar statistic about you will be available as well. This, uh, unfortunately, it's difficult to read on the, on the large screen. It, uh, essentially, it offers a whole calendar of the year, and it marks all the days where you actually have done something. So people could exactly see, uh, see at which days of the here you have to some or much extent been active. And this one would uh, usually set out quite clear whether you are mapping from the office or whether you are mapping from home. Because in this case, it's, it's pretty obvious. If most of the mapping uh, happens from Monday to Friday, then it's obviously happening in the, in the office. So yes, if somebody wants, he could um, figure out about another mapper, when the mapper is active, uh, what the mapper is doing, and also if the, uh, if the interest shifts with the, day of the week, uh, with the day of the week and so on, it would be always possible to combine. It's just, uh, luckily, we don't know of any cases where people are doing this, but you should be prepared. The data would be ready to do so. And this goes back to, like the other data, to about, to about 2009, when change sets were introduced. So you could track back, uh, back to 2009 when, uh, what your interests were, or probably in most cases, including me, back to the point where I joined the project, uh, what I have done. Another thing are change, sets common, uh, change set comments. The feature in itself turned out to be extremely useful. They had been introduced relatively late into OpenStreetMap. And the idea is instead of uh, escalating a discussion uh, always into the entire wide community to, to pinpoint the change set that is causing the, um, the problems and to, to attach the discuss discussion to that change set. And that way, you could see how controversial the edits of a single uh, mapper are. Um, this is only back possible to 2015, but mostly because the feature hasn't been implemented before. So nobody has been able to write comments before. There are also no indications that uh, people are wanting to, to cut off the uh, change its comments later in time to, to limit the amount of time that you could look back for mappers. So you could make, um, I've even seen that this morning, uh, but anonymized in uh, Peter Mooney's talk, that uh, you could make 
social graphs, how mappers interact, whether they are clicks that are working together, or uh, whether they are really um, enemy lines fighting each other. You could all get out this all of the, uh, the comment list because it's all ready to, to read from the main API. This is opposed to mailing lists and, in fact, all the other communication channels. This is an example for the, tech, uh, for the talk archives. You could download the entire, the, the entire set of mails that ever has, the entire set of posts that ever has been written to talk. It's here, it's in this uh, gzip text, or you could view it in the, on the web here. And it's also, it's going back to 2000, I think 2004 even. So it's also, when you uh, write something to, to awesome talk, it's also, it's public or it's project public. You know, in this case, it's even completely public forever. It's completely public forever in this case because the account system here is um, independent of the account system of the OSM user base. Quite similar for the wiki. We have two functions here to even facilitate sorting. You could either track who has contributed to a page or you could track um, which contributions somebody has made. You can also get back the entire history of, uh, of a single um, contributor back to 2005. And uh, it's somewhat mitigated, uh, but I think it's more accidentally than, in, uh, than on purpose uh, by that you cannot just uh, get the dump of the uh, wiki at the moment. I think it's mo mostly a technical constraint and not, in, not intended. So yes, it's ready to click. You can check it for any other mapper and yourself, of course, too. But it's not machine readable, so it cannot be mashed up with the other data. And it's are still separate accounts. That's different for the forum. We have exactly which aligns up with the um, OSM user account and is uh, searchable in the same way. Search for the author. Search for a certain um, list of posts. Um, all the people that have contributed and doing this forever for the lifetime, and for help, OpenStreetMap, which is also based on OSM user accounts. And so there are some other, other systems that I have intentionally skipped, hoping to talk about the most important. To give you a summary, there's a huge block of metadata of mapping together with changing data, a, a huge block of um, of metadata on top of the OSM database that allow to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, extra analysis and a lot of extra intelligence on the um, Mappers network. It's by GDPR. It's technically restricted to uh, to only purposes for the good of the project. But it's basically, it's, at the moment, it's accessible to the entire world, and the intent is to restrict it to mappers. But uh, this doesn't mean it gets invisible. And um, the second large block are the communication channels, which are each separated and do not allow to, to interchange information directly between it. So they are, in that sense, a little bit harmless. But if I want to make a suggestion, I generally uh, encourage you to, um, to use pseudonyms to avoid that you can, from your username, from your OSM username, track back your personal address and phone number. Because it's for the project, like mentioned, the whole thing is by, based on pride. So you really do want to, do want to have usernames that can build up reputation. So it's never going to vanish beside project inertia. And, um, and for the other communication channels, you should just keep in mind um, that everything you write is essentially stored forever. And uh, the best solution, the solution that I apply that actually had um, improved all my contributions to the communication channel much is um, I reread my messages before, um, before I send them, and usually um, I keep them if I, if I find traces of emotions in the, 
replies, I keep them back for some hours up to 24 hours. So you often will see that I will answer relatively late to a discussion, but that's on purpose because I want to cool down the discussions. Usually if you have facts, it's no problem to, to answer half a day later or so. But much of the things you, you afterwards don't want to have in the net about you happen because you, you answer in five minutes. So the general suggestion here is uh, just reread your messages uh, and consider sending it later to much later with the order of magnitude of uh, 24 hours. So thank you for your attention and I hope you have, and feel free to ask questions now. Hey, um, thank you so much. Um, so we have about seven minutes for questions. So I'm gonna run a mic on this side and Ushia is gonna run a mic on this side. So hands up over here first. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you. Um, basically, the privacy protection that only mappers can see is, uh, well, seriously taken, it's pretty kind of soft or, or fake, so uh, it does not protect any privacy in reality. So, in, in this sense, in better sooner than later, we will definitely need something better. I don't know, maybe mandatory um, one-off uh, usernames or uh, not storing usernames at all uh, could be a uh, solution there. So, um, probably it is very difficult to implement to make it securely, but uh, just w wanted to note that uh, this kind of longer term privacy protection solution is definitely needed, which is really kind of uh, hiding uh, and does not collect uh, data what is, can be later used for years. Uh, thank you for the remark, but as I have mentioned, uh, there are a lot of, um, a lot of OSM is based on um, username reputation, or I would to make it very clear, I would prefer to speak about username pride. So I don't see any, um, any approach to, to keep people from, from building up a reputation and using usernames over long times. It's just because it's so essential for the project. There are, there are pros and cons and the challenges are, but in the longer term, people maybe see after 10 years that they should have been more careful. So we will need to step like one step ahead and make these private settings as default ones. And if somebody really knows what he does and uh, takes extra steps, then he can link different edits to one username and build a reputation and this kind of things. So I think nowadays we should kind of look the other way, uh, use private settings as defaults, make this as easy as possible, and if really somebody wants to destroy their privacy, then make it possible. Okay, thank you. Can't the need to log in to see other users' data be circumvented by using the show data and then history on the slippy map? Uh, sorry? The you can circumvent the privacy, although ah. quite clumsily, by going onto the slippy map, putting the data layer in, and then asking for the history of something. It would be quite hard <laughs> to stalk somebody with that, but. I would like to suggest you <coughs> to read the full, oh, sorry. <coughs> I'd, <coughs> yeah. I'd like to suggest you to read the full OSMF concept. It's amongst the functions that would be uh, hidden behind the uh, login requirement. It's just, it's a long list. We have uh, essentially three different types and I don't have it all in mind. Um, one is nothing needs to be changed. One is um, the call in itself will still have a useful result, but the result is somehow altered. For example, if you ask for an individual object, you will see the object, but the username and the change set will be dropped from this. And some are just, you don't, you can't present meaningful data and for that reason, uh, the, um, you won't see and um, you won't be possible, it won't be possible to, to make that call without being uh, logged in. Uh, to what extent do you think that, um creating a community of human beings who communicate with each other is actually in tension with the idea of having privacy. 
Excuse me, please. I have understood the um, conflict between building a community and privacy, but uh, has there been more on the question? I've just missed it, so I'm sorry for this. And I, I was just wondering if, if everybody takes all steps necessary to protect their privacy, mm -hmm. how much do you think that gets in the way of events like these, for example? You know, people are here, we are not in wearing balaclavas, we're not protecting our privacy to, to the utmost extent. So clearly, human beings prefer to interact with each other uh, not anonymously. Well, there are many shades of grey and there are even colours to make the world more, more beautiful. So, um, I think I'm not going to, to give you my, um, my full detail, my full private details. I'm not uh, wearing a t-shirt with my postal address and uh, even the less my medical data. So, um, you can get to a conference and present a certain uh, role. In this case, you roughly get um, my name, uh, an image and, uh, and my username. And similarly, um, when within a project like OpenStreetMap, there will be in the long term, after the work is through with OSMF, I'm sure there can and should be discussions um, how we could balance between privacy and, um, and uh, building a community. For example, one thing I would um, would uh, suggest this way and would, would go in the uh, idea of one-off usernames but without making them mandatory. If we facilitate to have multiple accounts such that, such that people are used to have on average a dozen accounts or so and everybody else only sees the basically unconnected accounts but um, yeah, at a later point in time if you um, consider it um, useful, you can tell people that you own several of these accounts. You would be able to, to sort out different mapping activities, for example, by region or so. Or so. This might make uh, more privacy without uh, messing in with the, uh, with the community aspect, but it's a difficult thing. You have to, to fine-tune a, uh, a lot of screws and um, probably um, we have to find a way out and as we are still busy with the basic work at the moment, uh, I don't think this is going to happen in the next two years.